The Ukrainian government is speaking optimistically about the talks now. A government official telling Reuters late last night that Ukraine believes the war will be over soon when, according to him, Russia is likely to run out of resources. Quote, I think that no later than May, early May, we should have a peace agreement, maybe much earlier. We'll see. I'm talking about the latest possible dates. It seemed to me that would be an astonishing feat. But let's talk to someone who knows a lot more about this than I do, retired Air Force Lieutenant General Richard Newton. General, thank you so much for coming on the program. We appreciate it. All right, so is this real or is this just a fantasy? Well, good evening, Dan. Uh, again, I don't see it as a fantasy. In fact, uh, if we go back 20 days or so ago when the invasion started on February 24th, I was part of the, uh, I guess, the, the cry that uh, this invasion could be successful within 48 or 96 hours, and, and a lot of us have been proven wrong. The stiff resistance of the Ukrainian military, the Ukrainian people, and the, uh, the extraordinary leadership of President Zelensky, I think, has, has proven otherwise, and essentially the Russian military uh, again, a lot of us thought that they were six foot five, but really they're only five foot five if you think in terms of a, a March Madness basketball vernacular. And so, as you alluded to, to, at the top of the block, uh, they have a lot of shortfalls, and they are they are pinned down, if you will, uh, on the outskirts of Kiev. But they have yet to take a major city. And once they start or try to start to go block to block inside of Kiev and others, it's going to be a whole different story in terms of them trying to defeat the, the Ukrainians in their own cities. And the fear, of course, is that as Putin fails, he starts getting more brutal and starts brutalizing civilians more in an effort to force submission. Are you concerned about that? Dan, I am. And that's that's out of not only the, the, the Putin playbook, but that's out of old Soviet uh, playbooks as well. Uh, the term that they use, and we've studied a lot uh, when I was on active duty, and I know the, the Pentagon is as well, is they will escalate to de-escalate. And that is that can be very, very uh, troubling because then you'll see civilian atrocities continue. Uh, then you're going to see perhaps the thought or the, the veiled threat of chemical weapons or nuclear weapons on the battlefield. But let's not go there quite now. But, but again, the fact that Putin is on his heels, he's off his timeline, uh, is, is significant, and that his military has not performed up to any standards of a professional military. In fact, they're more of a force of terror right now than a, than a, a civilized military. And so that is got to be thrown into the equation as well. But it is troubling that uh, the more we back Putin into a corner, I think the more opportunity there is for him to now, uh, again, pull out uh, excessive chapters in that playbook that we're going to be very concerned about. So what does the Ukrainian victory look like? Well, Ukrainian victory looks like uh, a couple of things. Number one, uh, the Zelensky government uh, is remains in place. Uh, secondly, that there, uh, again, Putin does not have forces, much less to go inside city by city and control the cities as well as the rest of Ukraine. I mean, Ukraine's the size of Texas. So the fact that uh, territories underneath uh, the leadership of President Zelensky remains in the in the hands of the Ukrainian people. I think also what victory looks like is the tide turns not only on the on the world stage against Putin, this pariah, but also uh, at home uh, in, in Russia as well. And so there are many fronts to this, uh, again, what, what a successful outcome would be, uh, but it's uh, still a little bit too early to determine that. But I tell you what, I'm more encouraged about the Ukrainian military, as well as I am certainly about the Ukrainian people and the exceptional leadership of President Zelensky at this point. What do you make of that Ukrainian official who suggested that by early May, no later than early May, they expect the Russians to be at the at the table with a peace agreement? Well, they sh certainly are, are you know, trying to control the narrative, both from a diplomatic standpoint as well from an information war standpoint as well. Uh, I, I'm not so sure I would, I would to me, I'm not going to bet on any specific timelines or, or, or dates. Uh, this, by the way, one outcome could be that the quagmire just continues. And now we're talking in terms of months and perhaps into a year. Uh, there could be other outcomes in terms of diplomatic uh, negotiated settlement and so forth. There could be the demissal, by the way, of Putin. Uh, however, that uh, however that outcome could be, but another outcome could be you know the Ukrainians may just win on the battlefield, and they do it because wow. of by wow. the way their strong will, 
uh, a continued abundance of supply from NATO and the West, uh, as well as, frankly, the fact that it's, it's on the home turf. And so they have everything to gain in fighting and standing strong. The downside to that, though, as we're seeing before our, our eyes from the media, especially, is this: these atrocities will be a, quite a burden on the Ukrainian people. So, uh, yeah. but again, I'm I'm actually becoming more and more encouraged in terms of the resilience of the Ukrainian people, the military, and certainly President Zelensky. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.